Uh, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting of the North Andrew School Committee to order for September 12th, uh, 2019. Our first order of business tonight is the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If everyone could just remain standing for one more second, please. Um, just want to have a quick um, moment of silence or thoughts and prayers. Uh, there was a terrible uh, car accident last night involving some uh, North Andover students um, who attend Brooks. And um, some of the kids are in pretty bad shape, so I thought we could just uh, take a quick moment of silence for them. Thank you. Okay, so uh, welcome back everybody, back in school. Um, our first order of business tonight is uh, public comment. Seeing none. Um, so our first order of business tonight is going to be a uh, consent agenda then. First thing is accept a donation from the Kittredge PTO. Anything on this, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gilligan? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Um, just to note that um, this is a donation that only covers a portion of the mentioned Chromebooks and that. I think it's about 25, and Mike's giving a tech update. Um, and that's all been coordinated and ordered through Mike Grant. It's in line with where we are with all the other schools. Um, and I think if you think back, I think um, Mike's going to talk a little bit more tonight about our Chromebook replacement. But I think Kittredge, when we started doing getting Chromebooks in, in, in the model classrooms, was probably a little bit ahead. Um, and Mike told me that there's some other PTOs too that have some donations too um, to come forward. So I think it's a great reminder when I connect with Mike today. Just I know Thompson has a donation coming forward um, towards technology and stuff, so. Yeah, that's great. Well, as a member of the Kitchen School PTO, I'm very proud that the, uh, the amount they're giving us, $7,318.40. Um, I know Mr. McDevitt is as well. I not did anymore. not anymore. I was yeah. gonna say. I thought you were I've, asking. I've been graduated and clapped out. So Great. A kind of kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, what's a kangaroo? Always a kangaroo. Uh, do we need an official motion with this, Mr. Doctor uh, Doctor Gilligan? Yes. Okay, I'll accept the motion at this point. So I'll move that we accept the donation from the Kittredge PTO in the amount of seven thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and forty cents, as presented in the packet. Sorry. Second. Second. Uh, May motion made by Mr. McDevitt. Second by. Uh, Ms. Lynch, any further discussion? Yeah, yes, just a quick comment. I don't think we can talk about it when Mr. Grant uh, talks, but um, I believe that the Chromebooks are used across the district kind of in a fluid fashion in terms of if they're being used a lot in a certain place, they re get relocated as needed. Um, and so this is a donation toward that program in general and not necessarily. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just wanting to clarify that. So I know that years ago there were some schools had a lot of Chromebooks, some couldn't afford it, and there was all kinds of inequity, et cetera, and that's kind of been taken care of through how Mr. Grant runs things. Um, but I, I think it's amazing that this kind of level of fundraising takes place, and we're very lucky that we have that. Yeah, all our PTOs work hard for our kids, and this is a, another great example of it. Any other? I just the last comment is I just think it's nice that it all goes through Mike now mm -hmm. um, because that way, it, it, just like when we had all the donations for the model classroom, mm -hmm. we can make sure that we're getting it in all the right places. Um, you know, and um, believe it or not, I think last year as a district, even with, you know, with all of where we were, and Mike will talk about it, I think we were two to one last year almost for devices to students in the district. So we've made, I mean, it, you know, in 2012, when I was principal at Thompson, we couldn't cobble together 20 working laptops in the school. So this is pretty remarkable. So it is. Yep. Any Thank you, Kittredge. Comments or discussion? PTO. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We accept the donation. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, next row is approval of minutes from uh, July 23rd and August 7th. Have the committee members had a chance to review them or yes. any edits yep. or anything like that? Yep. Nothing at all. Could we take um, both as one motion, please? So I'll move that we approve the minutes of July 23rd and August 7th, 2019, as presented in the packet. Second. Second. I think we should go AMAM today. 
Uh, so motion made by Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Mabley. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, I was not there on August 7th. So if we take them together, I will vote to approve them both. But if we take them separately, Would you I will prefer abstain. prefer to take I, them separately? I don't care. I just think you should know. I recall you were not there. You had a work commitment, if I recall correctly. So I appreciate your you're working with that on that. So we'll, I think we'll just take them as, as one, if that's OK. Oh, that's fine. OK, thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, uh, that passes. OK, superintendent's report. Uh, so we have a couple updates tonight, a few different folks speaking to it, and it uh, should go pretty smoothly. Um, I just wanted to say that I think we had a tremendous opening to school. Um, particularly, we did a th things a little bit different with the staff this year. Um, so instead of getting the staff in the first day, um, they did their building-based meetings, trainings that day within the building. And I think, um, you know, I, we've got a lot of positive feedback on it uh, in the sense of typically when folks come to the high school first, that first day, um, they're all thinking about getting in their classrooms, how they're going to get set up, how they're going to have their, you know, grade level meetings, meet with their principals, do their training. So uh, that was pretty exciting. Uh, additionally, I think um, it was really great to have all of you there. So I really appreciate it. We, I think it was the first time in years we probably had all, yes. every school committee member there. Uh, and I think we're a pretty special community to be able to have, the, you know, the town manager show up, the police chief, the Absolutely. fire chief. Um, you know, uh, all, you know, and all the different folks. And um, I'm going to have Lorene just talk a little bit about what the teachers actually did those days uh, because it was professional development and uh, it was pretty exciting. So, so the first day, um, so we had a full PD day. So there was some building time and then there was also some outside PD time. Um, we are fortunate in that all of our elementary schools this year have signed on with ST Math. Um, we will have Kara and Jen Hudak, who's our new uh, math coach, come present about ST Math. At a, are you having trouble <laughs> at, at another um, at, at another school committee meeting? But we had trainers, so we had um, specific trainers from ST Math in for those who are first year teachers using ST Math, and then um, our staff worked with second year um, people who were doing ST Math. We also have. Um, champions for ST math in each school so they also help these are teachers who helped with the PD we have a um, new IEP program which Marcy could probably speak to more but um, just generally um, it's through power school which is our information management system so it's called special programs so all of our special ed staff were trained in their buildings um, between Marcy and all of our ETLs so that was a that was a big piece and we will be over the next couple of months transitioning to that that new program. Um, I met with the elementary specialist, so that's art, music, PE, um, library, and we met regarding um, developing scope and sequence charts. I think I shared with you all at the end of last year our scope and sequence for the content areas. So now we are blending in the specialists into that as well. So we met to talk about that. Um, the elementary reading teachers met with Kristen Ando, um, and one of the big things that they're working on is the updated Dibbles testing. So the Dibbles 8, so they have had some training in that. Um, worked together to calibrate scoring, and they, all of our reading specialists, went over to help our new reading person over at the ABEC this week to get all of those kids tested. So that is done. I just saw the email today, which is great. And then the school nurses met with Cheryl. So it was, it was very busy, but very focused for um, PD. And then, of course, in the buildings, we did all of, all, all of the mandatory training, so um, including like your 51A, your Title IX, all of those trainings were done as well within the buildings. Yeah, and I would just add, um, you know, we've had significant change in terms of some of our leadership. Um, so it's really nice. Uh, I'd like to introduce our new Executive Director of Special Education who's with us tonight. I know you know him, our Masi Bakuzi. Um, and we've had in the central office here, we've had two out of the five main central office administrative positions have changed um, with Greg Landry being the director of human resources. That being said, what a difference a year makes um, with opening of the Brad Street and where we are today um, with all of the setup, the playground, the pavement behind the Atkinson gym. Um, and on the second day of school, uh, as usual, I think it's always hard on that first day of school for the Brad Street because you have 330 five-year-olds who have never been called, lined up, buckled, put in cars. Uh, and the first day we experienced some delays with the buses, we experienced some delays with the folks. On the second day, um, the dismissal, particularly car pickup and buses, buses left by 327, car pickup was done by 329, and that is 
much faster than most of the other schools. So that was pretty exciting uh, to do. And Dr. Tiffany Goddard uh, had a great opening there as well. Erin O'Loughlin uh, at the Atkinson and Alan Peters, um, the new assistant principal at the um, Franklin and Sargent. So welcome, Marcy. Oh, thanks, so, yeah. Um, just, we did do, our, the first time ever, we did a summer lunch program in collaboration with Stevens Library. So it was, um, I believe it was six Mondays throughout the summer, mm -hmm. and it was really, really a great thing to see. Um, there were activities at the library, there were kids um, that were so excited about getting the beads for the summer reading. Um, there were families that were returned families week after week and it was just great to see all of the interaction and the diversity in that room so it was really a great experience um, and we are meeting to look at expanding that next summer so um, in a couple of weeks I'm meeting with both the um, person who coordinates kind of the community programs at Woodridge as well as with Rick Gorman to talk about how we might be able to support the youth center with some of that in the summer but it was really um yeah it was really it really came together i have to give a lot of kudos to erica murphy who's our food services director she was phenomenal there was a lot of paperwork involved it was really kind of uh, late in the game and the state let us in um, and allowed us to do that she worked really hard and it was really um it was really a great experience so we're hoping we can expand that next year it was awesome i went for the well Miss Mark says I went for the lunch twice, uh, the free lunch, but because, uh, you know, but. Um, he pretended he was 18. Yeah, I, th I think the tremendous part was what was re it really attracted a lot of our English language learners. Um, and it was just the, the diversity there. It was just really cool. And uh, if we can expand that and do more of that and work with Rick Coleman on it, it's pretty exciting. Guys, next in the packet, you'll notice, um, uh, I know that Bev set, has sent you guys the all important MIASC times. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder that, you know, the biggest, um, uh, the most important time for the school board is that uh, Sunday from 2.15 to 3. Um, and that's where they have the meetings with the school board, uh, you know, with the uh, chair and the different members, and they ask questions. You'll see it. There's a full agenda there, exactly what happens. And also tonight um, on the table, I figured I'd just give you a refresher to take with you on the presentation about what NEASC is, what it covers, um, when they came in last year to present. Uh, Dr. Gilligan, do we need a post for that? I mean, uh, if, if they're gonna be with all five of us at the same time to talk about school stuff, do we need to, to post that as a, as a school committee meeting? I would think we probably should have to do that. Yeah. It's a good question. Um, I can check with Bev. Um, I think you have to. I can certainly check with council. I'm not sure what we've done in the past. It's every 10 years, so. Uh, it can't hurt. I mean, it's not, it's not public, um, right. I but, I, but I still think we have to post it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I was unfortunately, unfortunately, I'll be at a wedding, but I won't be able to attend. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll check with Suzanne tomorrow, and we'll, we'll, if we have to post, we'll post. We'll, figure well obviously, out. we're not the only public school that does this, so yeah. I mean, this, they would know. So. Yep. yep. That's just some clarification. We obviously meet prior to that, we meet on the 3rd, but... Uh, we'd have to probably we'd have for Sunday we'd have to post by two o'clock on that Thursday the third. I think yeah. that the standard is deliberation. You're not deliberating at all uh, on any school issues. I mean, you attended the opening day of school. You you attend a lot of events together. So I think well, that's the standard. That's more ceremonial though. I would say I would. Well, we'll see. Let's just mm -hmm. get some some clarification. Well, but if they're going to ask us questions about real school stuff as opposed to a ceremonial. Thing where we're there in our capacity. If they're asking it of the group, then you're probably yeah. right. Let's yep. find out. Yeah. They've been doing the visit since 1853, so I'm, I'm sure we can track it down. Um, <laughs> Ask Stan. That's, that's, that's it's Stan. Li I was thinking. Can we, Stan. can we do a lifeline too? Do they still play that game? Um, what's been millionaire? <laughs> it's what called was Stan. The date again? Because uh, I'm not sure. It's Six. October, October 6th. Six. Okay. And um, I'm not sure. I, I do remember the last time. Uh, the, the Patriots were on at that time, and some of the folks were griping that they were coming in, the parents at that time, but um, that was over 10 years ago, so. Um, so that's just a handout for that. Uh, and before we get to Mike Grant, I just wanted to give a quick Triple E update. Um, I think, as you know, I sent something out really early on. Um, North Andover uh, is at the moderate risk, which actually has no restrictions in the Commonwealth, no recommended restrictions. 
um, but working with the Board of Health Director uh, Brian Legras and talking to Dr. Frank McMillan um, with all of the other communities, particularly with participation in the bands and the sports. And um, it was more of a, a, out of an abundance of caution, what's best for our kids, just to, um, uh, out of that caution, and then B, you know, how do we work with all of the activities and the surrounding communities that are affected too? Um, so um, it's for the month of September in North Andover. I know Methuen and some other places have schedules that go longer, um, but Dr. McMillan and, and Brian Legrasse, the uh, Director of Public Health, um, you know, they'll have a recommendation for the month of October coming out and we'll release that. But I'd have to say that the high school, particularly the athletic director chat, working with the other principals and the other athletic directors and all the folks um, working with all the activities um, have done a really nice job. And I think it's just great to take the precaution, uh, even though even with the precaution, you, you have till about 7.30 or so. Um, but it's, uh, it's worked out well. Uh, and the hardest thing is the, one of the hardest practicing groups we have is band. Um, and we uh, had to paint uh, the parking lot, uh, a particular part of the parking lot, and we get students out by a time so that they have all their markings and they can practice every day. So, um, they call those dots, Dr. Gillian. Dots. And a score of 41.2. Point two. Point two. Point two, yes. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Some band humor. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> you, you got to get to one of the uh, competitions. Um, anyway, uh, that's the Triple E update. So I'll hear more from Brian uh, in the upcoming okay. weeks, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Mr. Grant. As I asked Mr. Grant tonight, because I know um, we talk a lot about in the strategic plan about um, providing up-to-date materials, curriculum, and um, those resources, but it really struck me this summer talking to Mike, um, we're getting to the point now where we're on like a, replace, a replacement cycle, um, and I just wanted Mike to talk a little bit about that and a few other kind of neat things that have happened, so. Sure, yeah, so thank you. Um, just, what's that? Do we not work this one over here? This one doesn't work with the uh, HDMI. So. Sometime last spring, we had um, there was a, a lightning storm that f fried a piece of equipment that's in here that allows the HDMI to broadcast. So we we're, we're running on like uh, through uh, NA Cam a limited HDMI piece of hardware that just produce just mi uh, mirrors up onto the larger screen. So I apologize for that. Um, so this is a very brief. Um, update on uh, technology and what we've done over the summer. So over the summer we added a, a device at the Bradstreet to try to simplify and streamline the pickup process and it, it, it's actually worked very well. There was one day there was kind of a glitch but it's called Car Writer Pro and there's a, a sensor or an antenna reader that's installed right at the entrance kind of Right, yeah, right after that new parking lot that's on the right. So as you're, as you're entering the main parking lot, there's a reader there. So as, and there are also, each parent in the kindergarten received a window tag that has a number on it, and each student's assigned a number. So as the students and the parents, as the parents drive in, it cues them up into a system uh, that looks very similar to this. And on the right, um, it'll start, queuing them up into groups of seven and it color codes them. So like, so in the inside they get, they can see who's, who's lined up. They start lining the kids up in groups of seven, start sending them out. And as the cars come through, they, they put them in the cars and then the next group of seven comes through and they, so it's actually, it's a really kind of neat system to see and, and, and watch how it works. So they see it on the mon they see it on the monitor live in the car pickup room and um, last year we'd have to have all winter, we had, um, some really tough, hardy souls that go with a clipboard yeah. 10 at a time, 10 at a time, run it back. Run so they're, it back. yeah, so they would have people with a clipboard, walkies running down the hill, trying to write down the numbers, who's, who's in line, who's next, and then send that up or try to read it off on the. So this here, you, you can have fewer people managing the, the process. You have one person inside lining, the, helping, like reading the names off, and then having the parent, like the teachers, line the kids up, have a couple teachers outside starting to get them in the cars. And it's, you don't have to have people running up and down the hill trying to get 
names and numbers and who's there. So the first few days, it's worked great. There was, like I said, one day there was kind of a little glitch. I don't know if it was the Wi-Fi or um, if, it was, if it was the antenna, but it worked great today. It worked great yesterday. So we've, um, we're have still trying to work out some of the kinks and figure out the way that the software works, but so far so good. Just at Bradstreet, just at Bradstreet. the, the okay. kindergarten pickup. Just because it's, it's such a tight area and there's not a lot of, I mean, the, the timing and trying to get the, the parents in and out. And sometimes, and if you remember last year when they opened up, it was backed up onto Main Street. And I so, don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recall that might get the least. Uh, so did the parents have to voluntarily like, fill out a form? Or no, we just got the list of the names of all the kids. So every, every kindergarten parent received a tag. Yep. And that tag number is associated with a parent, and, with a student. And the student's name pops up as the parent drives through. So the parent just puts the... So there's like a sensor on the... On the it's, like we, it's like Easy Pass. So there's like a little transponder in the, t in the tag that sends a c RFID. So it's, it uses the radio frequency yeah. identification. And the so parents it, have been using it, yeah. Yeah. So it, it records them as they come in and it records them as they leave. So oh, you can get, you get the, the time stamps of, of when they were picked up and, and when they came into the parking lot and when they left. I mean, it was amazing. I, I, the second day or one of the days, I watched from Mike's office. It's like um, if you ever watch The Wire. Anyone ever see The Wire on HBO when they had the shipping containers and they put the computer system in? You get groups of, but it's cars. So you get the seven groups of kids, you see them take off. You get the next group, and you, you, you actually see it in live time as they're leaving yeah as the cars um are driving through you can see them just pop pop up onto the screen and then as as the next group of seven leaves they come off the screen and the, and it just kind of feeds keeps feeding them through one of the first questions people usually ask is well what if they forget the transponder or they're taking the other car um and so they set it up that they would have those parents come down the middle and then they would f find out who it was right there and bring the student out but it's only been two or three a day. Um, and we also ordered um, replacement ones so that people can, if they lose them, they can get replacements or if they wanna get an extra one. And they cost us $3 um, a piece, so any, the first ones are free, any additional ones are $3 for the parents. And if you carpools? You can have two tags in your car. So if, if you, if, if you car- I'm picking up Amy's daughter, how do you know that? On a regular, if you do it on a regular basis, from Amy and put it in my car. You can, or if you do it on a regular basis, we can add add that person to that same tag. Mm -hmm. So within Very the system, exciting. you can um, within that tag, you can assign two students. So we have families with twins, and one tag is assigned to both kids, and it flip when you look at the names, it flip flops between both names. Okay. So that one tag is associated with two students. And for the not, you know, we have parents too where they have split custody and those types of things. That's why we have multi you know, or, Yeah, I mean, or different work schedules. Or mm -hmm. right. Do we envision this happening at another school? Is there a need for another school? I mean, if there's a need for it and if it, this works out and then as this year goes goes by, if it's successful, then I, you could. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's super expensive. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't. And we, we talked about that. We said, let's, it, it's so needed yeah. here. Let's do it. And if it works out well, then we can. Go to the other schools as well. Cool. You know, every school's unique, so it's yeah. You know, it depends, on, depends on the need, but um, it was really cool um, that you know one of the administrators had got a call about um, the time, and Mike was able to look it up. You know, this was picked up at this time, left at this time, and it was, uh, it was just really neat. Um, yeah, and you can see the the first student when the first student was picked up, and the last student was picked up, and the time it took between that. So I. We've gotten it down to about 19, 20 minutes um, oh. from beginning to end. So it's about, so it starts to pick up as 310 and it usually finishes right around 330 is the last kind of group of cars that comes through. And, and back to the first point, the 330 five-year-olds who have never lined up, never had their names called. Like once they learn how to buckle and they get in the routine. Yeah, the first day. 330 cars. cars. No, 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 but I'm saying yeah. in the sense of we're yeah. lining up all the kids from the buses and all. There's about a hundred, actually there's about a hundred cars that come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That come through there. Um, so. Yep. And it was funny, I was there on the first few days and like the, the kindergartners, some of them like don't even know their first name. So like trying to, trying to call names off and like, 
you have to look at their name tag to see what their name is and then get them in line. But it's it was well, right. it, it worked well. Right. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so the other the new thing that we're doing is uh, we're migrating to a new uh, registration system for parents. So as new new parents um, register their students in the district, we're going to be using um, a system that's tied into PowerSchool, and it's called PowerSchool Enrollment. And we're still f setting up the two, f there's two forms we're going to be using, one for brand new students and then one for existing students to collect their up and update their contact and um, health information. So the plan is next week to send out that to all of the existing parents and get all that contact information updated in our system using, using this and then then starting with all the new student registrations using PowerSchool. So the nice part is it's, all the data goes right into a kind of a holding bin for PowerSchool, and it, you can easily just migrate that right over into PowerSchool without any any extra effort. And, and it, it kind of cleans the data uh, using some processes and rules, and then moves it into PowerSchool. So it's a really kind of streamlined process that will save a ton of time and any kind of data um, errors and things like that. So the data will be much cleaner. Uh, and the process for parents will be much smoother moving forward. Um, right now we're kind of using Google, Google Forms for kindergarten and Formstack for other registration, and it just, it's not working. The other part too is all those other forms, Google is actually HIPAA compliant, but the Formstack that we use for current registration, we can't collect health information because they're gonna ch they charge a fortune for collecting and providing that HIPAA compliant. It's all built into the power school. This is a long way from, um, I remember filling, filling out, out three cards. forms <laughs> of cards yeah. for every kid. Mm -hmm. different colors. Yeah. yeah, and you know, there was a stack. It took me longer, you know, in the first day of school to fill out paperwork than for them to be in school. Mm -hmm. so this is great. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of upgrades in power school that we're doing that we, we had a lot of customizations that we had to remove. Um, because of the new systems and then we're slowly kind of putting some customizations back in um, but we needed to kind of strip all that old stuff out that we customized so that we can kind of see what is built into the stock program it's just been customized for so long that we really don't didn't even know what power school had updated to um, with our existing system so it's it's a process that's going to take us probably a couple months to kind of get everything cleaned up and straightened out um, but yeah so this this should be a, a a huge improvement uh, moving forward. Uh, and then just a couple updates on infrastructure. So we, we've completed all the switches in all the buildings, um, access points, firewall, uh, fiber network between buildings. And then this summer we, we purchased um, just an extra switch just to have. Uh, they have lifetime warranty, but if one goes down, we have to ship it back. And then we need to have something to replace it with. So in the meantime, we just put the replacement in, ship the one that's broken back, and then we get the new one back and we stick it on the shelf and just kind of keep rotating them that way. Yep. Um, access points, we put all new ones at the middle school and at Thompson, and then there were like two, three or four at ECC, the old building that we replaced with brand new ones. So that all the schools have the latest, the last two models, and we've replaced and gotten rid of all the original access points that we bought probably about seven years, eight years ago. So those are all gone. Uh, we can postpone the controller update to next summer. Uh, our virtual server wasn't ready this summer to be able to handle the size of the server that we would have needed. So we're hoping next summer there'll be some more updates and we'll be able to uh, migrate the controllers that control the Wi-Fi onto a virtual server and get rid of our, our, some of the hardware appliances that we use. So that's, that's that. And then some additional, we replaced the projector at the high school. Uh, if you were there today and you saw the, the presentation at the auditorium, that's a, that's a brand new projector. The screen needs to be replaced at some point, but the um, projector is a laser projector. We put all new cabling in. Um, so it's a, it's a much more, um, it's a better system. It's a brighter picture. And it's all HDMI, so it's all digital. It's not the VGA, so no more VGA. 
Uh, we did replace, we put some exterior cameras at the high school, uh, one interior camera at the high school and one at the middle school. Uh, the one at the middle school has four cameras built into it, so it has kind of gets four different areas in the hallway that they were looking to try to cover. Uh, next week, we're increasing our bandwidth. So we're currently have 500 meg Comcast and a one gig Verizon. So we're adding another 500 to the Comcast. So we'll have a one gig Comcast connection uh, next week. So we have been struggling with our internet at the beginning of school. It's kind of one of those things like if build it, they will come. Like so, if you if you offer all of this stuff, you're gonna people are gonna start using it. And unfortunately, everybody's using it. Or fortunately, so. Things have slowed down, so I've had to try to kind of shape some of the, the traffic a little bit to try to keep things running so that people can do what they have to do. So cutting out some of the high school kids on their phones, they can still use it, but, Thank you. but not for Instagram or for Spotify. So things like that we're trying to, trying to cut out, and, but next week we should be in better shape with the new additional bandwidth. Um, and then I'm meeting on Monday with Chris on the town side, Chris McClure and Dave, the network manager, to try to go over and try to figure out ways we can optimize kind of our, our current internet uh, and then make plans for next year or even this year if we have to update. Uh, lastly is the Chromebooks, and that's what you guys were talking about earlier. So we, as Greg said, we were probably in, in the phase of, of just replacing old and outdated Chromebooks. So we're at the point where for the most part, we're replacing just the ones that are end of life that are no longer being updated by Google. Uh, what we're trying to do with those, if they're still good and they're still being used, we move them down to the kindergarten building, uh, so over at Brad Street. And they're still fully functioning, so they're gonna be getting a couple of carts to put those in and use those at the, at the Brad Street School. Um, like I said, they're still fully functioning. They just don't get regular updates from, from Google. And what we did also is if there was a, so I didn't purchase any new computers, like any additional ones. So if a principal asked or was requesting carts or a couple of Chromebooks or a cart of 30, so we would, so that's what the, um, the Kittredge was. So they requested some, Thompson had uh, requested some Franklin requested some, so a lot of the schools. So we've, we've been adding them at the, at the principal's request, and um, they're either paying with them out of their budget or through school um, PTO donations. Um, and the last thing that's not up there is the model classroom. So we, haven't, we didn't do and focus on a lot of the model classroom over the summer because there just wasn't time. So we're gonna start looking at fall um, upgrades to some classrooms, adding, uh, either TVs like like these for smaller classrooms that don't need a big giant projector mm -hmm. or a model classroom with a projector. So looking at projects for the fall. Okay. Uh, summer was just too, too crazy with all of the other projects going on that we couldn't fit that part of it in. Any questions? Okay, that's that's great. Great. So um, again, back to what we talked about at the beginning. So I know that a couple of years ago, the whole way we kick started and got all those Chromebooks because the mm -hmm. PTOs all worked and kicked in what they could to help keep things going. And it sounds like that's continuing. I was under the impression that that was kind of an initial thing and that we would no longer rely on the PTOs for things like that mm -hmm. and that they could focus on other school needs or what have you. Do you yeah, have any I'm, feelings on that? N yeah, no, I, as far as, I don't, I'm not requesting money from PTOs. Uh, if a principal wants to purchase a set of Chromebooks for a specific purpose and their PTO is paying for it, I can do the purchasing for them. Um, so I'm not telling principals, no, you can't buy Chromebooks or you can't do this. Uh, that's kind of up to, they're, they're in charge of their building. They can make some of those decisions. But if I'm purchasing things, like for the district, sure. I use it on a per pupil basis. So like um, I kind of distribute them based on what the population is of each school. So a sergeant would get more than, than Kittredge and so on. So like I said, if, but if a principal was, I know like some principals were looking at, they wanted extra Chromebooks for ST Math or for a particular pro program. Um, if they requested that and they were paying for it out of their budget, then we can look at facilitating that. But the request didn't come to you first, it went to the PTOs first? I don't know where right. it went to first. 
I, I guess I would advocate that it would go through you and then you could help mm -hmm. them direct them the best way. That's yep. my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I think what I hear you saying is that we're concerned about the equity continuing across the district. And well, that- Also, I, I think that's a, lot, a huge burden on those families who do all the PTO work and fundraising yeah, for I mean, something that is a fundamental part of the curriculum. I, I don't think they should be paying for that. I could certainly check in. I think that um, the amount that's been donated, I mean, certainly 7,000 is great. Well, I, and I think it's fantastic. Um, I just don't think it should be. But it hasn't, been an, it hasn't been an initiative out of our office or out of the schools that I'm aware of at this time. I think, um, you know, uh, PTOs were looking. Uh, we had pre Previously, it had looked to have PTOs start to fund um, uh, classroom libraries at the other levels mm -hmm. and it was very expensive you know it's about three thousand dollars a classroom and the PTOs kind of wanted to take a step back from that and mm -hmm. have us reevaluate in which we did and you know we can certainly check in but I think it's uh, I think some of the PTOs are thinking you know like would make this donation in the sense of this is what we think is we want to spend our money on mm -hmm. uh, as a school um, I think the biggest key though is everything's on the mic now which so, is um, key, yeah. You know, it's it's not that all out blitz of we need all the PTOs monies by percentage of how much they make to get those model classrooms. Um, there's some one offs here and there. But the biggest key is everything has to go through Mike, because if you buy things offline, like used to happen years ago, right, we don't support that anymore. So, you know, there were schools that had whiteboards when we went to the model classroom which we can no longer support and it's time right. you know with those replacements and stuff too that we're taking out of the consolidated technology budget and our budget so thank you yeah any questions for mr grant no nope. will this presentation <coughs> be linked to the agenda at some point yeah i'll give it to bev great yeah i just didn't i had added some things um after the fact but yeah i'll, I'll give it to bev thank and she you. can add it to it any questions Thank you, Mr. Grant. Thank, right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very good. Two last quick items. Um, uh, the teacher uh, uh, hall, well, hopefully the teacher hall of fame. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but we're looking to set the uh, non-professional teacher status, making professional status for the 30th of October. Not the 31st, that would be Halloween. <laughs> um, and that's going to be the Stevens Library? It would be at the Stevens Library. I realize that folks have different conflicts. It's been right around that time. Um, and that's the tentative date of what can work with the library at this time. And Ms. Uh, I get, I'll check on the time. Okay. That's the time. Usually, usually a nighttime event. Six, yeah, I want to so. say like six or seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. And then last but not least, I'd just say um, on the eve of the gas disasters here in the Merrimack Valley, I was thinking back to the ABECC and then on my eighth, my eighth day on the job and um, thinking about being a new superintendent. Um, I just want to say I'm really proud of North Andover. I think it's a really special place. I wrote about that in the nightly news, which comes out tomorrow. Um, not about the gas, but how this is a really special community. And... It wasn't people looking for the credit or to you know get on TV. It was people just going to work. Um, and I think that the ability for the schools to open up a, a shelter really quickly, the ability for us as a district to work with police, fire, people from all over the region, the building inspectors, the town manager, the DPW, to get the schools um, inspected have gas restored to get all the things relit into open school on that Monday was pretty remarkable. And then the ability to work with youth services and all the different agencies in town to best support the impacted folks uh, was a daunting task. And you know, I think as a community and as a region, we did the best we could in a really challenging situation. And you know, it just it seems hard to believe it was a year ago. A year ago. Um, but I'm just really proud to. Uh, have the you know, and on it to have the ability to lead this school system, but to work with so many great people from Rick Gorman to the town manager, to the police and fire, to just just about everyone in the community, and then all the parents and all the folks that did everything for the shelter, and then everything long term to try to support families. So, um, you know, I think there's still some folks not even home. Still, I think I'm not even sure. I saw Rosemary the other day. I'm not even sure she's home yet. No, not yet. Um, but it was um, yeah, it was something else and. You know, I, I've, there was so much on the news about it today, I just thought I'd mention it, so. Yeah. Well, it's good to see there's a couple of houses being rebuilt, one on Herrick Road and the one on, on Main Street, they, they, they look, they're, they're coming along pretty good. 
Pretty good. Uh, thank you for the update, Dr. Gilligan. Um, I had just a couple of things. In fact, I was going to mention the NIAS because we covered that already. And I was going to mention the professional teacher status event. And we've covered that. Um, I just want to tell the, the membership, we, um, Helen and myself, Vice Chair Picard, and myself, and Dr. Glenn met the other day to talk about some of our goals that we want to accomplish this year. Um, a lot has to do with you know funding of the schools and, and some of our capital projects. Um, obviously, if people don't know the town, the new town manager starts on Monday. And we hope to engage her right away. Um, she's going to have a lot on her plate. Obviously, uh, we've been without a town manager since since February now. Um, I know uh, former chair uh, Keene and now uh, selectman chair Valancourt have been doing a an admirable job. But it'd be nice to have you know a town manager in place um, to fill the big shoes that Andrew Mailer left. So I think we'll be engaging her right away about our budget, about our capital projects. I know people have expectations as far as the middle school as well as. The commitments we made with the uh, facilities master plan two with the uh, other renovations so we'll be engaging them very 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 soon on that um other than that i have nothing is good. there any update on the uh, middle school no when, we won't like when will we, we would find out in november um okay. where we stand as far as uh, getting funding so we're, we're knocking okay. upon it but i think as we talked about during our summer workshop we need to start talking about contingency plans yep. for that um, and funding it ourselves uh, whether through the master plan or facilities master plan or, or whatever but it's it's our it's our top priority it's something that we're going to engage with her right away for some reason right. i was thinking there was some update at the end of september i thought so too mm -hmm. yeah. so that was two, two years ago uh, when we first applied yeah. when we first applied there was an update that we had made the next cut but once you make that next cut you're okay you don't right. you need to cut again okay. okay now it's just about show me the money Right. Okay. Um, so we'll see. Because there's obviously it's, it's, it, it's obviously very competitive, okay. and there's obviously a lot of schools across the district that are, are much larger than than ours, that have bigger projects than ours. So they tend to suck up a lot of the uh, the funds. But I will say the the budget this year, which um, you know the governor signed in in July, did increase uh, SBA by an extra I think twenty five million dollars uh, over over and above the you know one cent on the sales tax. So um, who knows? We'll see. Okay. If you recall, they had to schedule a site visit. Yeah. yeah. And they for subsequent years they don't, don't have to, to do, do that. It again. Right. But it's December the week or something. I'm sorry? December that we oh, November. 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 November okay. yeah. Thank we'll you. November. And is that have you guys received your tax bills yet? No. Okay. In the in the in the report on the tax bills, don't be surprised. I talk a little bit about the facilities master plan too and and looking at all the different options for um, a middle school expansion, and I'll talk a little more when we get to the preliminary just discussion about goals tonight, okay. about some other ideas too. Yeah. Um, let's quickly segue into the Hall of Fame nominations. I know uh, Dr. Gillen could <coughs> touch on it. Vice Chair Picard. Yep, we have a couple of nominations. We have a committee that's um, been put together. Kate Rossi is our community member. She's also a graduate of North Andover Public Schools. Um, Greg Glandry will be the administrative representative. Um, Ms. Mabley and I will be um, school committee representatives and Jane Broderick will be there. Um, so we're going to meet next week and we'll bring forward, we can have up to two um, people recognized each year. It doesn't have to be two, it can be one or it can be none. Um, but we do have nominations and we will be reviewing those. And I'll be bringing them back to you uh, for the October 2nd, 3rd um, school committee meeting. And then we'll recognize them on October 30th on at October the 30th. Stevens Library. Yep. Any questions for Ms. Picard? Thank you, Helen. Sure thing. Okay, new business. Discussion, the process and timeline for FY20 Superintendent Scrutiny Goals. Dr. Gilligan. All right. Well, um, it was interesting last year. What we, you know, as being a member of the new superintendent induction program, um, there's typically set goals for superintendents those first three years. And I know them really well in North Andover because we've gotten a rhythm of uh, <laughs> the first year goal, second year goal, third year goal. Um, and first year goal. Yeah, first year goal, <laughs> second year goal, third year goal. Uh, so what had happened is last year is I wanted to stay true to those goals because they are required by the state and they're required by the new superintendent induction program, which is put on by the state and the MASA. But last year we had some slight tweaks and I thought the coolest part was that the school committee has a goal every year about engaging the community. Um, but more importantly, we had those shared goals that were tied really to um, a lot of the, uh, the main three objectives of the strategic plan, all students, professional practice or professional, um, uh, consistent and rigorous curriculum. So um, 
I don't want to be um, presume that I know what the school committee goal is, but I did uh, take an opportunity, as we've done in the past several years. Uh, tonight's just really a discussion. I had a, a discussion the other day with the chair and the vice chair about it. And as we've done in the past, I just put together some ideas that I, that I was thinking about um, as superintendent. And I think there's three components to it. One is um, these are not uh, necessarily the traditional second year goals um, that they have within the program and within the state. I was thinking about how we could really move forward um, toward meeting the goal, the, the, you know, the goals we've set forth in the strategic plan. So really, um, you know, as we've done in the past, I'll hand this out tonight. Certainly provide any feedback you want, have a chance to look at it and get some feedback to David or Helen or Beverly and we can incorporate that into a first reading uh, draft to bring forward at the next school committee meeting and then have a second reading. Um, but really, um, I think a couple things. One is um, certainly look at what the school, what you have set forth in the past. I just put it there for your reference around engaging the community and I always think that's a pretty good one. <laughs> but more importantly, the shared goals um, for us, um, one is we have several contracts coming up. Uh, I think, Jim, is it four next year? Four units or is it three? Three or four bargaining units? Well, we definitely have teachers and teaching assistants. For sure. Um, and then the administrative assistants are coming up, but I'm not sure if they're the same year or one year later. I thought you just finished the TAs uh, with Ms. Lynch. It felt like it, but it was because yeah, we, we were late. Yeah. Oh, we just, we we just finished food services and custodians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, custodians and food services were last year too, I think. So I think they might be a year off. Administrative assistance might be the I same. I think it's. I think it's administrative. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, I, I I just want to mention you know the one of the goals would be to really complete those that contract. We've had very successful interest-based bargaining the last two times. I think that's what the union would like to go to again, and mm -hmm. certainly it would be up to the school committee whether they'd like to enter that again. But it's worked really well. Um, and we can certainly talk about that. Um, but then more importantly, I, I, you know, a shared goal, uh, not just with the elementary. Remember, we have the facilities master plan too, which included additions of the, at the Franklin, uh, the Atkinson, and then the Kittredge, um, because we have portables coming to the end of their lives. We have spaces that aren't always that appropriate. But I also think that we have to and specifically call out the middle school um, and look at ways to do that. Um, you know, and then in terms of superintendent goals, now, just because I don't put visibility, even though a lot of second year superintendents still put visibility, it doesn't mean that I won't be working on all the things that aren't included and uh, the things that are within the strategic plan, it's just a really focus. Um, and I think that the direction setting and strategic planning, I'm pretty excited about. I think we have a really good strategic plan, but at the same time, I think um, the, the objectives, those three main objectives are really critical, but I think we're ready to sunset a few of the initiatives and certainly we have some initiatives that really need a lot more action steps. Um, and when I first took the job, I was like, oh, I'll be ready. I want to go by the spring and present this. But talking to my coach and other superintendents, they said it's really critical for us to really work um, with all of the data from last year. I remember we talked to over 1,100 people surveying and in person, and then the observations that I made, and then working as a leadership team. So that's parents, teachers, community members. We had a chance to really dig deep using a protocol this summer into the strategic plan. And I'd like to continue that work so that we can uh, have a revised copy to bring to you in November, which I think works really well because it's budget season, budget directives, uh, and we can, you know, we'll have some recommendations or commendations, not the full report on the NEASC at the high school, but I think it all ties together nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, teacher evaluation is something that I want to continue to work on. I, I think that we can continue to improve. I think we've made great strides, but it's not something I want to let off the radar. Um, professional development, and last but not least, I think it's important to recognize um, I really want to build a collaborative leadership team. There's a lot of change, and there's a lot of moving parts, and I think the ability to, you know, have people come together and start working in a way that um, continues to improve our customer service atmosphere for students, staff, parents, uh, and responsiveness to such. And I'm pretty excited about the two new changes in central office, uh, and I'm excited about, you know, the leadership changes in the building um, so that we can best meet the needs of kids. So those are kind of the areas that I was, you know, looking at. They're a little bit different. It doesn't mean that I won't be focusing on, um, you know, advocacy with state reps or those types of things. 
But really, you know, to the decreased class size, you know, I think the facilities master plan two is critical. I think me, you know, the relationship that I developed with Melissa Murphy Rodriguez, the new town manager, I've already scheduled meetings on a weekly basis. Um, and I think that's going to be critical. And I think the advocacy in which we push to talk about the north end of a middle school, and I, and I, and I push a little bit in the town newsletter, and I only mention it because, you know, I, I brought it up as a discussion last year in the town newsletter, and I got a couple of calls from some residents, um, you know. But I think we have to continue to pursue the MSBA, but make a decision like one, how many times and when we don't get through that process. And then I think we need to explore all the options uh, through the community about how do we fund something like this, um, an expansion project. But I also think, uh, more importantly, that as an administrative team, we have to look at all the options um, creatively of how to reduce class size at the middle school. So. Um, one, you know, obviously we want an expansion, but we'd have to look at, I think we have to look at all the options possible, um, whether they're interim options, whether they're part of the middle school's part of facilities master plan two, it's self-funded, or with facilities master plan two and the additions at um, Atkinson, Franklin, and Kittredge, you know, do we look at different models, different things, um, you know, none with recommendations, just what are those options so that we could really get those additional, it's about 15 or 16 classrooms that would be an expansion, so. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to do that. So, um, you know, I welcome any feedback that anyone has and we can get together a working draft and I can work with the chair and the vice chair like we've done in the past and bring that for our first reading. Any initial thoughts? Got a plan? Yeah. yeah. Talk more. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gilligan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. First reading of the DECA trip proposals of DC. I want to just kind of go over the. This is a, a standard one, right, uh, Dr. Gilligan? Mm -hmm. oh. And Miss um, Marks, do you, I know Miss Marks had reached out. Um, this was one where they had requested um, to suspend the rules, mm -hmm. and. Um, I know that there was some concern last spring about the number of yeah. requests that were going forward to suspend the rules. So um, the teacher here is aware that we are not doing that this time. He, his request was based on he thought it might save a little bit of money in terms of the flights, but when I asked him um, how much, like if we could get any um, factual data, he said he wasn't really sure. But it was just that, you know, typically flights will go up. So, but he, that, was, that was what the request was based on. And I think at this point, most of the faculty know that we don't want to spend there. We want to give the public time to comment on this yeah. stuff, and if they have concerns, they can reach reach out to us. Because well, yeah. this, this is two months away, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna we'll we'll, we'll approve it. Uh, I'm sure on October third. But I mean, for those, I mean, I think those uh, I'm pretty familiar with Deca uh, and what they do. It's a pretty special group. And it's, yeah, they yeah, do a I, good job. I actually, I mean, I'm, I'm not in favor of um, traditionally suspending the rules for this, um, but I mean, I think we have an awful lot of trips that take place in town, um, and there's expenses that are associated to them. So, you know, I would be in favor of at least giving them the opportunity to start to book flights now and suspending the rules. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think. Um, Mr. Marfoni, um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Marfioni. Mar Marfioni is aware that we're not going to, he, and he, he was okay with not. I did let him know that, yeah. yes. Yep. And he, yeah. Even though I, October 3rd is pretty far away? Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking flights going up in the next three weeks. I mean, it's a pretty standard trip. They initially asked to suspend the rules, but when it, when it appeared, there wasn't, it, there was no information about whether it would be a savings or not. Um, you know, we um, talked with them. And I guess one of my questions would be, when do they set these? Because we had meetings in June, we had a meeting in July, we had a meeting in August. So did they just establish this trip in the last couple of weeks? I'd have to check. I think that, um, I, I think a couple things. I think that we suspended the rules all the time for so long that everything was last minute. I, I, I suspect that, um, I would disagree with that. I mean, I don't think that we suspended the rules yeah. all the time no, for that. No. I, I think we suspended them when we had kids um, who won a certain competition, 
and then needed to go yeah. on a trip, right? Yeah. Like we didn't know that we were going to qualify for robotics right. until they actually did. And then it was like, oh my God, it's coming up and it's in two weeks and we've got to suspend for that. Like we wouldn't suspend for it, for example, for a band trip because we know when those are and they're, you know, they bring those to us, you know, because they're, they're asking the parents to start paying and, and make reservations and all that stuff months and months in advance. Same thing with, you know, Yellowstone or... Um, uh, some of the other trips, you know, yeah. the, the Dominican yeah. Republic, you know, that, that we've gone on in the past. I mean, I think that, you know, in the future, I, I wouldn't want to see those kind of come through at the last minute, but we've suspended when we had yeah. to based upon the success of our students. Um, and as a cost thing, I would be in favor of giving them the option if there was a flight sale that came in, and they do in the fall, for them to be able to jump on it. Yeah, I mean, I just know that they had asked. I had requested it from the chair, and then when we just followed up with a question from the advisor, he wasn't sure it was necessary at that point. Um, so, um, you know, typically with a new school year, there's new events, and they plan it. Certainly, something we can look at. But I assume that it's it, it may be an annual event. It may not. Um, but it also may be something that they could look at to do in the spring. And I think we did a lot, lot more. I think last year, for example, we did a lot more. Uh, where we weren't, where we had a lot more advance notice on these trips. Yep. So. And, and he's given us notice for ones that are in, I think it's April yep, there and yep. May. There. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I would move to suspend the rules um, for the DECA overnight trip uh, uh, to DC, uh, which is, I think, November 14th to the 17th. Second. Um, I'm happy to entertain the motion. I, I don't think it's a, I think it's within the scope of what's on the agenda. Um, even though we didn't, you know, it doesn't say we're going to, you know, vote on it today. But um, I'd like to just make sure we get the word of the faculty. And I think you have, Dr. Gilligan, yeah, that, so that, I mean, that we don't, we don't want to be in the habit of this. And you're right, we haven't done it a lot. But I just want to make sure the public has an opportunity to weigh in on stuff and we're not suspending the rules unless it's an absolute critical emergency. And in this case, why I disagree, it's a, I don't think it's an emergency. I will entertain the motion. So we have a motion by Ms. McDevitt, second by Ms. Maybe to suspend the, just to suspend the rules, not to approve the trip, but to suspend the rules. Any further discussion on, the, on, on suspension of the rules? Hearing none, I think on suspension of the rules, you gotta take a roll call on it. Um, uh, Ms. Lynch? Yes. Ms. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. Ms. McCard? Yes. Ms. Tristine votes no on suspension of the rules. Uh, so that passes four to one on suspension of the rules. Okay. So um, now move that we approve the uh, DECA overnight trip to Washington, D.C. for November 14th to the 17th, 2019. Motion made, second by? Second. By so second by no one, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm leading, the, <laughs> leading the conversation. Uh, motion made, Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Lynch. Any further discussion on the trip? Just Ms. one comment. Mabry. I would agree that this is something that probably was scheduled ages ago. So mm -hmm. as we we just need yeah. to. I, I think one of the things, though, when you think about year to year, right. I'm not sure they not they don't know who's going to join a club in a particular mm -hmm. year based on you know a new academic school year. That's the only piece um, that I could actually possibly right. think of. So, but we can check. Even if they don't know who's going to be in the club, they're going to know whether or not they plan to offer the trip, because we've right. approved trips that they end up abandoning all the time. So right. Yeah. Is there and anything I, in the policy about the minimum amount of time to present these trips to us? No, I, I'm not sure. I think we've we've improved that time greatly over. Yeah, I think it definitely has yeah. changed the last, in the last two years. I think it's been significantly changed. I think we had a lot. Well, I, I don't want to say a lot. It just seemed like we had more. And last year we had a lot less. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also to Mr. McDevitt's point, sometimes I think that I think you know when we qualify for something or we have a last minute thing. So we can that's, certainly that's check. different. Yeah, that and that's different. Yeah, we can certainly check on it, and it's it's uh, obviously an area we can if if it's something that we, we they knew about before, we can plan for it for next year. Yeah, it just would be great. Yeah, because we do hear from parents that they feel like they're squeezing a corner a little yep. bit with some of this stuff. So. Sure. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Five zero. Vote on that one. Everyone voted. Five oh five. I vote in favor of it. Just to, okay. against suspension of the rules. Just trying to set a precedent here. Um, okay. C. First reading. Second overnight Decker trip proposal to Boston and Nashville, which is in your packet as well. And this is taking place. Um, 
in February. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So this is just the first reading. Mm -hmm. Unless I anticipate any other procedural motions to suspend the rules. Anything you want to add to this, Dr. Gillen, or Ms. Marks on this panel? No, I, this is something we've done before. This, yeah. is, um, this trip is 9th through 12th graders. The next trip you look at is 10th through 12th graders. And this is trip, just going so. to Boston, so we're not worrying yeah. about uh, the price of gas right now. Hmm. Okay, any Although it's uh, almost as much as the D.C. trip. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any questions there that we need to answer before we vote on this um, on the We'll vote on to, we to approve this on the third, but do we have any questions or concerns we want answered or information we want back from the staff before we vote on the third? This would be a good time to ask it now. So I'm just going to say, I mean, I, I think we've done a really good job in the past of um, controlling the format where this has kind of come in. Um, and um, I mean, I like to see that everyone's kind of following it and that, that we've got the agendas um, in there as well. So um, I don't have any, but. Um, I think if we are going to make any, we need to make sure that we update the forms for that um, so that, you know, if we're asking the same type of questions all the time, you know, that, that the answer is uh, documented before it comes to us. Okay. And Dr. Gavin, we still have the list of approved transportation and they have to choose from our companies. approved transportation yep. companies and all that. Good. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so we'll take this up on the third. I like his chances, though. <laughs> it, it's a great trip. Uh, one year I chaperoned the D.C. trip for um, thought, honors, and AP history. Yeah. And when I got back, um, when we flew back, a lot of kids were going right from the airport driving over to Boston for the DECA. The DECA. Yeah. Um, and I just got to tell you, the experiential learning and some of these proposals uh, were remarkable. And the biggest challenge with one of the, um, the young ladies and, and man that I rode back with on the plane, flew back with, was th they were excited about this one and they thought they were going to do well and they did do well. But then one of them had a sport in the spring and they were trying to convince the other one if they qualified to be able to do the spring. But it's, it, it's awesome. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is public comment, second time around. Anything from the penalty box? Nothing? Good. <laughs> um, okay, anything from the, from the uh, committee members? Oh, welcome back to school, everyone. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say the same, and I hope everyone has a uh, great success with you. Thanks. Nope. All set? I do. Okay, Ms. Picard. I just really want to congratulate um, the administration on the opening, and I was so impressed. I was had the opportunity to stay for the keynote speaker on access, equity, and inclusion, and it was tremendous. Um, it was really an excellent, and I'm really proud of our district. That's li like our leadership, you know, where we're taking the lead in Massachusetts. I don't think most school districts were um, spending their first day with a keynote speaker for the whole, um, you know, for the whole district. So I thought that was tremendous, um, and. Uh, to follow up on Dr. Gilligan's uh, mentioning, the NESPA Marching Band, New England Scholastic Band Association competition will be September 28th at 1 o'clock at North Andover High School. There'll be at least 28 bands, or that's what they're advertising at this point. This is a really exciting event, and um, it goes from 1 o'clock, um, it'll go for probably six or seven hours. Um, so small bands, big bands, um, it'll be terrific, Amen. lots of fanfare. And a huge fundraiser for our um, for our NAMA um, association. They make more than ten thousand dollars every year, so it's terrific. Thank you, Ms. Picard. Okay, I would entertain a motion to move to executive session. Uh, so I will move that we adjourn to executive session to conduct uh, strategy regarding negotiations with the North Andover Teachers Associations and not to return to regular session. Second. Motion made by Mr. McDevitt, second by Mrs. Ms. Uh, Ms. Lynch. I think we need a roll call this. Ms. Lynch? Yes. Yes. Mr. McDevitt, Mr. Truce votes yes. Yes. Ms. Yes. Moody votes yes, and Ms. Picard votes yes. We are adjourned from this meeting to go to executive session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.